A few weeks ago, I created a video which said how you can create a full stack architecture which scales very well. In that video, mostly what we discussed is about how you should set up your CDNs for front-end file delivery and how your back-end should be there connected to your database, right? But that is not full stack, right? Because we optimized a lot of front-end, but we did not optimize how you can create a truly distributed backend in that video. In this video, you can consider this as a continuation of that video. And in this video, I will tell you how to create it and why this is like a very hard problem to actually solve. How to create a distributed backend across the world and why this is a hard problem. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, so before we start this video, please bear with me because the sketchman is about to run out of ink. I'm gonna try to make it as bold as I could, but the rest of the stuff can be filled in by video editing. So what I want to focus more on before we start is how the websites or how the web generally works. So you have your client, this is your client computer. This is the server which you access. This server sends you index.html on the first response. And then maybe you send an API request which goes to the server which could go to some other server. Let's keep it the server for the sake of simplicity. And this API maybe does some transaction on a database, right? get some data, return some data and so on. So this could be an EC2 server, this could be a MySQL instance and this could be your computer, right? A very simple implementation of how a very small website would work. Now in order to distribute it, in order to scale it, what we did in the last video for front end is we said that, hey, let's move this part over here to all the parts in the world, right? So if it doesn't matter where you are situated, we will replicate these static assets everywhere in the world and wherever you are as a user, if you are here, for example, you would get served from this CDN. If you are here, you will get served from this CDN and so on. Now, the advantage with front end is that these files are static, right? They sure would have an expiry on them when they get revalidated from some origin server or whatever, but that can happen in the background as well, which is called a stale while revalidate, right? So th there is actually a full library built around this. So stale while revalidate, really what it means is that your clients, which are requesting a lot of, you know, information from your CDNs, your CDN will keep on serving that, but in the background, it can just go ahead and update itself, the index or some any other asset which has changed. The tricky part comes with the API. When you call an API, APIs by nature, in a lot of cases are dynamic, right? For example, if you're trying to hit a login API, of course, you cannot cache this. Of course, you cannot, you know, you could cache it to a certain extent, but you know, you some at some point for a fresh login, for a new login, you have to hit the database, right? So the APIs usually, let's, let's forget about caching for now, usually have to go the full route. That is through the, from the client, to the main server, to the database. Now in the backend, the main pain point is not the client, it's not the compute, it's actually database. Because if you even look at what we did in the front end scalability part, all we did was moved, if we consider this as the full state of your application, of your front end web application, these static assets, we move this full state to every single place in the world, every single place where let's say AWS has, AWS has a data center, right? So what we did is we copied this whole state, every single region in the world, and that made it super fast. This is impossible to do with a database. And here is why. Let's try to create a scenario where this might be possible, right? So we're gonna see where the bottleneck hits. So we have the earth again, some, this does not look like earth, so, but let's assume this is the Terraform Mars. So let's say we have, these data centers on that planet and we are trying to make a scalable backend architecture. Now the first problem you have to solve in that is you have to bring the compute on the edge, right? So this machine right here, which was EC2 or Droplet or whatever it is, Lambdas, Cloudflare Worker, whatever, you have to bring this on the edge. So that is the very first step to reduce the latency. Because if you're sitting here, if you're sitting in New Delhi and you are communicating to a server, server in New York, which is like almost opposite side of the world, then of course there's gonna be compute latency plus the network latency itself, right? So you want to minimize that. So you bring the compute to close, to close to user. And this is already possible today you can see AWS you can see cloud player 
You can even see Vercel, which is basically AWS itself. You can see Google Cloud. You can see DigitalOcean. You not DigitalOcean. I don't, know, I don't think they have a serverless functionality yet. But you can see most of the major cloud providers do provide you the ability to just have, you know, units of compute at edge. For example, AWS has Lambda at edge. So Lambda as at edge is different from Lambda. Cloudflare obviously has Cloudflare workers. Vercel also has these edge functions. Google Cloud Provider also would have something. I'm, I'm not very familiar or strong with Google Cloud, but you would realize that compute can be brought here. That means you can have some sort of URL assigned, which responds to a dynamic IP, which corresponds to the nearest compute unit. That is fine. The problem is, when this compute unit, when this computer right here wants to access the database. Now, what do you do with database? Now, surely enough, you can use the, use a managed database and call it a day. But in all honesty, databases are something which are tricky to get right in a distributed environment. Now, if you closely look at what we are doing, we are pushing the state away. So all the state used to be on client earlier right you would download everything all the html css javascript package so that i could say like that is some sort of state we pushed it to cdns that is we pushed the state away from the user so that gave us some advantage again we had a single ec2 instance or single instance from where everyone every single computer or every single visitor contacted and that also had a database what we did is we pushed this compute away to every single user or I should rather say we pulled it to every single user. That's fine. But you cannot do that with database. Why? Because a user performing some action over here would update the database in a way that this action should be reflected here, right? In, in most of the scenarios, that would be true. For example, if this user registers with the username cool coder, then you don't want this user right here who might be simultaneously trying to register with the same username for this transaction to succeed, right? Obviously, this is like much more serious if you are trying to build a fintech product or anything. And what we call this as, as a strong consistency requirement. So what strong consistency is, it just means that whenever you write something to the database and then you read it back, then this write is reflected, right? So strong consistency is extremely important in a lot of scenarios. You need that strong consistency, right? And the second thing which we need for the databases to be distributed is, is kind of like low latency. Why? Because you would realize that this whole infrastructure is as fast as, fast as its slowest component. So if the server is slowest, then of course the request would be very slow because this is a, you know, a blocking component of the full request. If the database is slowest, then this would be the slowest component and so on. So strong consistency and low latency is pretty much, you can say opposite words in case of talking about a globally distributed database. Let's say you do have a database which replicates itself all over the world the moment some write happens. Now, if you have spent some time, you would realize that all major cloud providers, even AWS, for example, which provides Aurora as a managed services for databases, they do provide a strong consistency feature globally, but this is extremely expensive. Plus, the latency is pretty high in that case as well. The problem with this this thing over, you know, strong consistency plus low latency is, if I'm trying to hit something or if I'm trying to get some data over here, then of course this person over here would not be able to access that data, that same data, for example, if I'm trying to access some record or some community post or whatever, until this database replicates all its changes all across the world, not just to that particular node, but it has to broadcast it all across the world. Because, I mean, systems are not smart enough to determine yet that this is trying to access that particular thing so let me just you know push it extremely fast to this particular thing and then i would be able to you know make use of that so global consistency for databases is obviously like it'll involve if you're trying to do that it'll involve some sort of time duration whether that's in a few hundred milliseconds or seconds but that is there i mean for aws it's 
obviously pretty low compared to what Cloudflare says. For Cloudflare's KV, KV is like a Cloudflare key value distributed store. And what Cloudflare says is that, hey, we're gonna provide you eventual consistency, not strong consistency. And what eventual consistency is, is that it says that, hey, you perform the right, but we do not guarantee when this right would be visible in the next read, right? We can only give you a duration and Cloudflare gives you a duration of 60 seconds. That means you have to wait at most 60 seconds, that is a minute after you perform a write for it to be available for read from a different region, right? So if you are writing a key in this part of the world and if you're trying to read it in this part of the world, there's a very high chance that Cloudflare would disappoint you, right? Because it is not strong consistent it is eventual consistent and that makes sense because they want to keep their read, you know, their read results on a very, very, very low latency, right? So you cannot get this low latency with strong consistency in databases. And if you want to get low latency, you have to compromise on the consistency. You have to either drop it to eventual consistency or just session based con consistency where you just say that, hey, if this is writing, then this only this should be able to get back the you know the same data on read as well so it's it's kind of like consistent for this particular node but i mean depending on your use case that might or might not be very useful so i guess that's the that's the punchline that even if you distribute the compute even if you do all sorts of stuff you would actually get stuck here where you would have to make a call that do you want to distribute a database to the edge as well. And if you do, then you have to make a hard choice between strong consistency and latency. If you choose to go with both of them, you're gonna face some money issues. Obviously, if you have money, that's fine. Plus, obviously, it's not still, it's still not the solution, right? These, these cannot be like combined together. There is no such thing as low latency plus strong consistency, right? At least that that's, that's what I know so far. So this is why a better setup, at least for the initial phases and what I can say in a generic way, is that you have a computer or <laughs> the client computer, not you. So you, your client has a computer, they have, they access it from an EC2, which is like distributed somewhere in the world. And then this connects to a single database, right? A singular database sitting somewhere in your, I don't know, somewhere in your AWS region or somewhere, which is like the master node, which has its own replicas. And you know, you can have all sorts of that stuff, but probably don't try to go for distributed database just yet on a small to medium sized application, because this is a hard architectural problem to get right, right? Especially when you start involving a lot of, a lot of data, being replicated and shared across a lot of instances globally. So this could be anywhere in the world, anywhere. This person could be anywhere, but maybe, just maybe, you can stick this database to some single location, right? And if you can get this architecture up and running, for this also, like, you have to make your servers stateless. That means this request should be pretty much stateless in a way that this server should not be storing any sort of data associated with this client. It should all be done in the database, which is like sitting somewhere in the central part of Earth or Mars or whatever. But the important part here is that you understand that even if you want to break down this database, it's kind of difficult, right? It's kind of difficult to maintain that strong consistency plus low latency. That's why we don't usually talk a lot about, hey, let's distribute your database as well globally. And this is like a one click setup because I think it's not so far. I mean, I haven't seen a company which solves this problem really well right now, right? I mean, AWS is pretty much everywhere, but still this is something which could be solved, could not be solved. I'm not sure like what are the technical limitations of achieving such architecture, but this is definitely something interesting. So there was a ton of information in this video. I hope I was able to make sense. If yes, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If no, then rewatch the video again. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.